I've got a special video to share with you to examine the closest family members to the set of complex numbers. Here I've got a nice problem that was from the team select. In this video, I want to talk about stereographic projection. Here I've got a nice quick number theory problem. Here I've got a nice number theory problem, which involves the famous number 42. Today we're going to look at an interesting multivariable limit that seems to defy logic. And I've maybe titled this, Be Careful With Changing to Polar Coordinates. But of course we'll have to explore this limit quite a bit to see why we have this title. So let's look. We're looking at the limit as xy goes to the origin of x squared y over x to the fourth plus y squared. And this is from the following math.stackexchange post. So the classic thing to do is to check the value of this limit as we approach the origin on a couple of very simple curves and then see that we get different values for the limit or perhaps we'll be gathering data that the limit might exist. And then if we get enough data to show that the limit might exist, then we need to find the value of this limit using some tricks. And sometimes this trick is in fact passing to polar coordinates. Let's first look along the line x equals zero. So that's the y-axis. So notice in that case, our limit collapses to the limit as y goes to zero of zero over y squared. But that's equal to zero. You might think that that's an indeterminate form, zero over zero, but that becomes zero before we start taking the limit. And then there's a companion to this, which would be what's happening along the x-axis. In other words, what's happening along y equals zero. But you'll see that we achieve the same value of the limit in that case as well. Now let's look along the line y equals x. So that means our limit will collapse to the limit as x goes to zero of x cubed because y is equal to x, so we just have x squared times x in the numerator. Then in the denominator, we have x to the fourth plus x squared. Now we can factor an x squared out of the denominator and cancel it with what's going on in the numerator, leaving us with x over x squared plus one. But now taking that limit, you'll see that we get zero. Okay, so getting zero for this and this definitely provides some motivation that perhaps this limit exists and is in fact equal to zero. So, like I said before, one way of calculating the value of the limit or backing up this data with a logical argument is to pass to polar coordinates. So we'll set x equal to r cosine theta and y equal to r sine theta. So let's write that here. We have x is r cos and y is r sine theta. And notice that x, y approaching the origin is equivalent here to r approaching zero. Okay, so that's gonna give us something like this. We have the limit as r goes to zero of r cubed times cosine squared theta times sine theta all over r to the fourth cosine to the fourth theta plus r squared sine squared theta. So we have something like that. And now, just as we did right here, we can factor an r squared out of the denominator and cancel it with stuff that's happening in the numerator. And that'll leave us with the limit as r goes to zero of r times cosine squared theta times sine theta over, we'll have r times cosine to the fourth theta plus sine squared theta. So we're left with something like that. But now notice as r approaches zero, we'll see that the numerator approach, approaches zero while the denominator approaches sine squared. So in the end, we'll see that the value here is zero. Okay, so that's good. So that means the value of our limit is in fact zero. But in fact, that's incorrect. And we can see that it's incorrect by taking a path along one more curve. 
So in this case, for this last case, let's go along the curve y equals a times x squared, where a is really just any number. Okay, so in that case, our limit will turn into the limit as x goes to zero of a times x to the fourth. So that's what we get in the numerator because y is equal to ax squared. And then in the denominator, we'll get x to the fourth plus a squared x to the fourth. Well, we can factor an x to the fourth out of this and we'll see that we have the limit as x goes to zero of a x to the fourth over x to the fourth times one plus a squared. So that'll simplify to a over one plus a squared given that those x to the fourth terms cancel. But notice that this is not equal to zero. Well, most of the time it's not equal to zero. Of course, if a is equal to zero, that is equal to zero, but that's not super interesting. That would just be this case right here. So this data gives us motivation to say that the limit does not exist. So what gives here? So it turns out what happened is that this polar limit up here is actually dependent on the value of theta. And not only is it dependent on the value of theta, but it assumes that the value of theta is fixed. And what I might mean by fixed is it's not dependent on R. So of course, if it were dependent on R, then we would have to take that into account in order to calculate this limit. And for certain dependencies of theta on R, we would see that this limit is not equal to zero, which is exactly what we saw right here. Okay, so what have we uncovered here? Well, we definitely looked at a multivariable limit that does not exist. And we showed that it didn't exist by taking different paths towards this limit either these linear paths or this quadratic path. We also saw that this tried and true trick of passing to polar coordinates is not always applicable. And in this case, it's not applicable because it produced some sort of value for the limit when in fact there was no value for the limit. So now I guess maybe the most important thing to answer is how do you know when you can use polar coordinates and when you can't use polar coordinates? Well, I would say the best way to be sure that using polar coordinates is okay is after passing to polar coordinates and doing simplification, if all of the thetas disappear, then you're okay. Okay, so if there were no thetas here, then we're okay. So if the passage to polar coordinates eliminates the dependence of your function on theta, then this trick will always work. And that elimination will probably have to do with some sort of trig identities. So just be on the lookout for that. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button. Subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.